Hi, my name is Amy. I'm a natural food chef, and now that we're in the thick of winter squash season, one of the most common questions I've been getting is how to prepare all of the winter squashes for the delicious recipes that you're seeing. So today I want to share with you some of my fail-safe techniques for preparing winter squash without losing a finger. So today we're going to be talking about four different varieties of winter squash. Butternut squash, red curry squash, spaghetti squash, and acorn squash. I'll be telling you a little bit about each one of them and how I recommend preparing it. The first is the butternut squash, probably the most common variety of winter squash that you're seeing in the store. So when I look for winter squash, I look for ones that have a really long neck and a smaller base. The reason for that is that it's really difficult to cube the base part of the butternut squash. And in my opinion, the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. So I like to focus on cubing the long neck if that's what I want to do with it for my recipe. And then I roast the base part and use it in something like a soup or a puree or a mash or something like that where it's a little bit easier. You're probably familiar with butternut squash. It's that bright orange flesh that you see in a lot of fall and winter time recipes. What I recommend doing with the butternut squash is first cutting off the top and the bottom. This is a common theme with winter squash cutting and really all fruit and vegetable cutting when you're dealing with an uneven surface, which is that you want to find yourself a flat base. So I cut off the top and I cut off the bottom stem areas. Then I cut right between the neck and the base of the squash. At this point, I take the neck and I stand it up on its widest, flattest end. And instead of bothering with a vegetable peeler or a paring knife, as I've seen some folks do, I just take my sharpest chef's knife. If you don't have one of these, I definitely recommend getting a sharp chef's knife. It'll make everything in the kitchen easier. And then basically just shaving down the sides of the squash until all of the skin is gone. At that point, what you can then do is cut it into long slices, as thick as you want your cubes to be. Then we're going to turn it around and cut it into long slices going the opposite direction. And then we're going to cut across one more time to get it into the cubes the size that we're looking for. You're probably wondering, what do I do with the base of the butternut squash that you cut off and set aside? So at that point, what we're going to do is just cut the base of the butternut squash in half, use a spoon to scoop out the seeds, and then place it face down on a baking pan and stick it in the oven at 400 degrees until you can stick a fork into the skin and it feels really soft. At that point, it's going to be easy to scoop it out of the skin and use it in whatever recipe you need butternut squash puree for. The second squash variety we'll be talking about is spaghetti squash. So spaghetti squash has a light yellow stringy skin when you cook it. And so what we're going to do with spaghetti squash is really similar to how we started with butternut. Cut off the top and the bottom stem areas. Then we're going to cut it in half lengthwise and you're going to go back in with your spoon and scoop out the seeds. At that point, it goes face down, hopefully in a glass Pyrex dish if you have one, or in some sort of baking dish with just a little bit of water, maybe like half a cup. You put it face down in that baking dish, Bake it in the oven similarly at 400 degrees until you can poke into the skin with a fork. Usually about 30 to 45 minutes is what it takes. Once that's done, you pull it out of the oven, let it cool a little bit, and then you're going to take the squash in hand and take a fork this time and run your fork along the cooked squash area to get long spaghetti-like strands that make a great substitute for spaghetti in any recipe that you might have. The third squash variety is the acorn squash. It has a light yellow mild flesh, and one of the hard things about acorn squash is it has all of these ridges all around, and it's really hard to get a flat base. So oftentimes when I see recipes that are calling for peeled squash, I'll shy away from something like acorn squash because it's darn near impossible to peel. So what I'll do instead with acorn squash is the skin is thin enough that you can actually eat it. So to make my life easier, I focus on doing that. I cut the stem top and bottom off and get a flat base, and then cut it in half from top to bottom. Same approach as the other ones, then you're going to take a spoon, scoop out the seeds. Then I like to thinly slice my acorn squash and roast it on a pan in a single layer to get nice kind of browning quality along the sides. So this goes great in salads or a cooked grain dish as a nice hearty winter squash addition. 
So the final squash we're going to talk to, about today is the red curry squash. It has a sweet and nutty flesh and this beautiful bright orange color on the outside. Similar to acorn squash, the skin is actually really thin. So I like to work with red curry squash because it doesn't involve all of the annoying peeling that you deal with with something like butternut squash or a pumpkin. So again, I cut off the stem, top and bottom. I cut it in half. From the middle, I scoop out the seeds using a spoon. And then similarly to the acorn squash, I'll cut it into slices. But for the red curry squash, and I'll share a recipe on my website for red curry squash that I really love, I actually prefer to cut it into dices. And then I'm going to do a boil in a little bit of water to get like a nice, almost steamed texture to the red curry squash. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about winter squash and how to best prepare it. If you have any questions, feel free to visit me on my site at deliciousbynature.com.